maybe just go a little bit about today's topic on uh, breakthrough productivity and staying focused and disciplined. Um, like I said, I believe it's a great opportunity with Christmas and other holidays coming up here uh, for both yourself and your staff to stay focused. Um, today, we're going to go through some common productivity myths and also uh, reveal some of the, the true essence behind productivity and show how to make every minute count. Um, so without further ado, uh, we'll roll forward and let uh, Chad take it away. All right. Thanks, Daniel, and welcome, everyone. As always, uh, first and foremost, uh, I welcome you and thank you for who are on the call. So we're clear that you have a choice always speaking about productivity. Uh, you always have a choice about where to spend your time. And we at Orem Academy and the Orem Group, thank you for granting us the privilege of your next 45 to 60 minutes with us. Uh, and also, I thank the Orem Group. Um, thank you, Daniel and Tanya, for everything you do to support the Orem Academy and uh, give uh, all of our Orm Academy uh, educators, you could say, the venue like this to be able to make a difference. And that's uh, my intention, of course, of being here as an Orm Academy member. Uh, Orm Group's all about empowering excellence in dentistry. And this masterclass is no different. So uh, this is really designed for you as a practice owner and for your leadership. And perhaps you have other people on today's webinar who lead with you. And that's always invited. You know, you're welcome to have your team attend these series uh, because it's really meant to be uh, discussion and inquiry and, you know, experiential to a large degree in the sense that you can discover some new ways to uh, lead your team and ultimately provide better service, patient care, and, you know, build your brand. So with all that said, today's topic, as Daniel said, is uh, breakthrough productivity as I take time to get to the slide. There's no rush in being productive. We'll take our time. <laughs> so breakthrough productivity, staying focused and discipline. We all like that. Now, also, as I was preparing for this webinar, um, as many of you know who have been on, I'm not a doctor myself. Um, I have a background in leadership for sure and have practiced everything that I'm offering you here uh, with many teams over a long time. Uh, however, uh, given who's on this call, uh, as doctors of dentistry. And obviously, um, I would say you're already in the top 1% of productive people on the planet. If if we think about you and healthcare, and also for those of you who also run your business and you're a business owner, and you have your team also, and then you have your family and you have everything else that you manage in life. So um, thank you for being on and clear that you've obviously demonstrated over time, otherwise you wouldn't be where you are, an ability to be productive. With that said, as in many leadership topics, there is no top to the mountain of mastery. So I invite you to be on today, and I assume you are on today, to uh, learn some techniques or habits to go to the next level in being productive. I know that this is a conversation I'm always looking at for myself because I'm always committed to going to the next level. And, you know, I learned early on that um, there is no top to the mountain, as I said. And, you know, a lot of people complain in business, I'm too busy or I'm, I'm, you know, I don't have enough time. And we'll get into some of those myths that Daniel was talking about. Uh, however, for every person who says, including when I sometimes say to myself, I'm too busy to get something done. I'm really full of BS, quite frankly, because, and how do I know that is not because I'm not, not necessarily full with my calendar and with my time. And it may really be for me in that moment of time that I, it really is, I don't have enough time but then I can always look and say, are there more productive people than me on the planet right now? And you could look to somebody. I don't know if that's for you. You would look at a world leader or you'd look at a top CEO in the industry or a thought leader out there in the industry, in the dental industry, or you look at other people who are running maybe, you know, 20 practices and you have five practices. That's pretty good. Or you have one practice. The point is we can always find somebody probably who has the same amount of time in a day called 24 hours, but we would say they're getting more stuff done than we are. So that's always a bit of a, um, a, a waking up moment where both it's a bit confronting for me, but also aspirational because I know that I can just look and look in my life and use my life as the experiment ground, the laboratory and say, okay, good. Where is it that I can be more productive, efficient and disciplined? 
Okay. And so the practices I'm going to share with you today are ones that I absolutely um, have found work. But most importantly, through my experience of working with many great teams, uh, have worked for them. And this is about high performance. So try it on. Some of them you may say, I'm already master of that. Some other ones you might say, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of sloppy in that area. And those obviously uh, are the ones that we can go to work on. So a quick overview. Um, we're going to debunk the common myths about productivity. We're going to reveal the true essence of productivity. We're going to specifically go over 15 practices to turbocharge your productivity. I also will give you at the end of the webinar and Tanya will send it out to you an actual guide and checklist with these 15 practices so you can uh, practice them yourself. And also we're going to leave with one question to ask yourself when all else fails and you want to be productive. This one will always pull you forward into your best productive self. Of course, we'll have some action steps and takeaways. And as Daniel say, we'll get you your CE credits at the back end as well and some upcoming events at the Orm Group. So um, I, I talked briefly about you know a little bit of my background, but not to deep dive it here. The main thing I want you to know is I've had the privilege of working with really, we think about those teams that are uber productive on the planet. I've stood on stage, designed initiatives, worked personally in their leadership teams with many of the top leaders around the globe in many different ways. So I both coached them to be more productive and at the same time, I've learned where they're already very productive as a team. And there are some common habits that I'm sure that you'll resonate with as well as we get into it here today. So breakthrough productivity, what it is and isn't. So let's look, this is where we're gonna bust through some myths. So what it isn't. So I'll ask you to think for a minute. Again, the topic is breakthrough productivity. We're really talking about an exponential ability and capacity to get stuff done and feel good about it. Um, so here's what it's not when we talk about breakthrough productivity, because there's a lot out there in the market that you probably heard about. Uh, like, you know, just go bigger, go harder, work faster, work longer. And well, all of that may produce some results. It won't necessarily be any breakthrough in productivity. So we're going to create two worlds here. The first world is kind of what we're by default sucked into because usually the conversation we grew up in or the excuses we hear around us are constituted by this list. So I talked about being too busy. We all have this complaint, I'm sure. And even if we think we don't, if we listen to ourselves, we probably do complain about being too busy because mostly if we can't get to something, the first excuse we're going to have is, well, I'm too busy to get that done. Or if somebody called you out on something, whether it's your spouse or your kids or your parents or your customers or your business associates or your patients, uh, we might have some version of this. We're just too busy. There's too much to get done in a day. There's too much for the staff to get done. There's too much for me to do as a business leader. I'm chair side, then I'm running the business, then I'm um, training and developing myself, myself like I am today. You know, where does it all fit? So breakthrough productivity is definitely not entertaining a conversation that we're too busy. And I'll just say this off the top because obviously this is the top of the list for a reason. If you start to think about how much internal dialogue that you and I as human beings and top performers already often find ourselves in by default almost, it, revol it evolves around something around this excuse. And I invite you right off the top as one of the first insights and mindset shifts is imagine if you could retire ever saying this phrase again, which is I'm too busy. You see, it's one thing I took on years ago, which was a major breakthrough. And really it's the key to the rest of the webinar here. If you just took that on where you noticed in life where you had some version of, and there'll be more I put up on the list here, but some version of what comes out of my mouth is I'm too busy. And if you could start to hear yourself say that and see yourself see that, you'll start to then not say it because you're committed that that's an excuse and it doesn't have you press up against something structurally that you could change or something or some place where you're you're just, as I said off the top, we're just kind of BS ourselves that that we're, we're giving it everything we got. We got to work smarter and we're going to get to that. We got to work with more leverage 
and we're going to get to that. And we got to work more peacefully because we want better quality and we're going to get to that. But it starts with this. Can you hear yourself say your version of I'm too busy when somebody calls you out, when somebody asks you why something's not done on time? If we say any version of we're too busy in that moment, what we do is abdicate responsibility for everything because now we got an excuse. And it doesn't allow us the privilege as a business owner and a leader to lead with excellence and go foundationally to what actually happened that we didn't deliver. Because that's ultimately what we're doing here. Either we have a promise to somebody else or we have a promise to ourselves. And when I say I'm too busy to get something done, I could even use it as an excuse in advance. That's, that's unacceptable as well in high performance. So more to come. I hope that communicates. The first thing is, if all you did was never say, never allow those words to fall out of your mouth, anything about too busy, even your team can't be too busy. If you're the leader of your team, you better get them together and figure out why you're hearing we're too busy. Uh, you can't go lay this on your team right away. They'll probably tell you to take a hike. But uh, you can start to deal with yourself about it and lead by example. And then you'll, you'll find that you're more effective in sharing what you're discovering with other people. All right. So we're never too busy, really. There's other things at play. That's the punchline. So next. Uh, so breakthrough productivity is not you having more than you can do. We have an endless list, especially if you're a top performer. Of course, there's more we want to accomplish, more we want to get to, even if that's more vacation time or more time with the kids or more time to work out. That's more than we can do. So we kind of live in this perpetual state of too much to do coming at us and we can't get to it all. You see, so breakthrough productivity is not living in that world. Again, it comes back to a lot of language that we tell ourselves and kind of we create this self-fulfilling prophecy that we have too much to do. Well, do you really have too much to do? And we're, on the other side, we're going to get to the other world in a minute. But on the other world, if you have the experience having too much to do, there's some actions you take to get clear about what it is you're actually talking about versus living in the emotional reaction and state that you're too busy and you have more than you can do. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, that leads to you being overwhelmed. Okay. So that's not breakthrough productivity. We can't be our best when we, again, are overwhelmed and burdened and weighed down and carrying the weight of the world around. The, I'm overwhelmed. Okay. Well, now you're a victim. Okay. You're a victim to your circumstances. And what you're saying is you lack power in the face of what you're dealing with. And we always know that, that, that the victim kind of mentality obviously does not work well in the world of high performance. So being overwhelmed is part of the story that we can put together to deflect our responsibility in taking the action that would be a breakthrough in the world of productivity. So you're starting to hope here kind of this molasse of conversations we live in that's so common out there, they don't even show up as irregular because they're not. They are common and it's normal and no one's going to call you on your BS if we're saying these things. But you could start to call yourself on it given we're talking about breakthrough productivity. All right, are we having fun yet? I don't know. I am, so. I like inquiring into this with you. Okay, next. What else is not breakthrough productivity? Okay, you being out of time. So me being out of time, that, that's again, what does that mean? I'm out of time. Okay, we're going to deal with, as we move here, that you do only have 24 hours in a day. That's a fact at least the way that we've set our calendar up as human beings to organize our activities. 24 hours, seven days, four weeks, 52 weeks, unless it's a, yeah, 52 weeks. Extra day, if it's a leap year coming up, you get the point. So there are there is this construct of time that we live inside of. And it again, it goes back to the scarcity mentality. There's never enough time. There's never enough of something. You know, time is a big thing for people. So then we run this complaint on ourselves and other people that we don't have enough time to get things done. Okay, again, it goes back to we're too busy. I have more than I can do. I'm overwhelmed. Why? Because I don't have enough time. I'm out of it. Time occurs as scarce. And well, 24-7 is a real construct we need to live in. We can have a transformed relationship to time, which we'll get to. All right. Uh, also, breakthrough productivity is not about having too much pressure. So, again, we're looking at this from, a, if you think of it as a conversation, some of us really do experience pressure. You know, we have a deadline. I'm sure many of you 
as doctors experienced pressure in dental school. You know, I know I did in my university career. Um, and I can only imagine what that looks like to turn yourself out into the professional that you are um, as a healthcare provider. And I'm sure you experience pressure. So this is, and, and I'm sure you experience pressure in your day-to-day. -day. I mean, there you are with people's well-being in your hands. There's serious business and life is at stake sometimes. Um, definitely people's well-being all the time. So that's a lot of pressure I can't even imagine. Um, and you have it. However, if we have an attitude that there's too much pressure that lives again in this whole world that creates overwhelm and stress and anxiety because whatever we're dealing with is too much. And this thing called pressure, which is a very abstract term, no one can actually point to what pressure is. Are we talking about air pressure? Because that's not it. We're not talking about pounds per square inch and that kind of pressure in a scientific way. So we use this term pressure for this abstract kind of experience of life when there's too much coming at us and we don't have enough time. But again, start to get a little suspicious and check it out. What do we really mean when we say pressure? I mean, there's only what you're doing at any moment in time. That's it. You have this moment and this moment and this moment, and there's what I'm doing. So is there pressure in what I'm doing? Well, we could say we need to produce something in a set period of time. Otherwise, a bad consequence will happen. Therefore, there's pressure. Yeah, okay, well, there's a consequence, but is that even pressure? You, you start to see. So again, this it takes a little bit of thinking with it. I don't, this is, you know, I'm not telling you in this case not to ever say the word pressure, but start to get suspicious when we think that we have too much pressure. I tell you, there is a remedy for too much pressure in most cases. And again, in the operating room, I'll set that aside because that's not my area of expertise and maybe pressure is completely um, needed and valid in that world. But in the world of management and leadership, it's rare that life is actually at stake and pressure is mostly a fabricated construct, which we use as, in this world of um, needing to release ourselves from or release the pressure on us, which gives us the, um, the right to step back and not cause a breakthrough in productivity. All right, is that making sense? Okay, good. Um, oops. So uh, also breakthrough productivity is not you being the martyr for the team. So this is a big one. And this sometimes can even, I don't know, this can poke into the heart of some of our identities. You know, for many of us, we like helping people. Uh, as healthcare providers, you probably like helping people more than other people than a large majority of the population. Um, so this is part of that, but mostly when we're talking about team and leadership here, this is more that um, you know, you're taking one for the team. Um, you're gonna do all the work, um, the, all the pressures on you, right? So you're becoming the martyr for the team. So they could say, oh, my boss really works harder than anyone else. So again, breakthrough productivity will, will never be present when we're in that world of we have to be the one. I have to bear the cross, right? I have to uh, go the extra mile because no one else will. See, that doesn't have us confront what we're not doing in our leadership to have people go the extra mile and to create a culture where everyone's performing at the level you want them to so that you don't have to be the martyr or the victim to the business or the victim to the story that we're too busy and they're too overwhelmed. Okay, uh, next, um, breakthrough productivity is not blaming others for your lack of organization. Okay, I think that makes sense. But again, we could say, well, I'm not very productive because my staff aren't organized or my, you know, the office isn't organized. We'll get to that as well. That's part of it. But anytime I'm using an excuse, there's no productivity in it. And again, there's a theme here. It doesn't give me the chance to be 100% accountable, responsible for where can I put in something that's missing and stop going to these excuses. And then uh, it's also not about worrying about procrastination. And it's also not about you working 24-7. Okay, so I think that gives you a sense. A quick story, I was thinking about this. Um, when I was a young manager, I grew up in hospitality business. That was my first career, my second career is you know, all about coaching and working with organizations and their leadership teams to create great cultures and produce great business results. The first half of my career was all about learning business, 
through rising up through the restaurant ranks. Um, I was a general manager of a very large flagship restaurant. We had about 200 managers. And I just remember this one night I was, it was a Friday night, I think. And, you know, I was probably a 12 hour shift. And for some of you who have been around hospitality, there's something called the final mop, the final mop. Final mop is where you take your mop and, you know, you got that clean pail of water and soap. So you, you may do a final rinse of that. I know this is very technical, so I hope you keep up with this. So there's the mop and you got the mop and I'm on the service aisle and the service aisle is the tile floor between the kitchen pass through and where the seats of the restaurant are. Anyway, remember, I'm the general manager. I, I'm the head guy at this restaurant, 200 personnel. We're probably doing 10 million sales a year. It's a big operation. And it's 1 a.m. I can hear my staff in the lounge. They're having a beer, uh, laughing, having some good time. Like they should, it's fine. I got my cooks out there, the chefs out there, the front of house staff are out there. And of course, I'm the martyr, okay? I'm the I'm the guy, I'm, I'm more busy than anyone else. And of course, I got to get the job done myself. I got my tie flipped over my shoulder. I got sweat coming down my armpits, sweat off my brow. And I remember this final mop and the, the floor is glistening because it's got to be perfect. And uh, And there I was. And then all of a sudden I just dropped. And I didn't drop because I slipped. I dropped because I was exhausted. I mean, at this point in my career, I'd been trying to manage this way for a long time. And as I'd laid there on the floor, in the wet floor and the final mop, it was almost the final mop of my life. Um, but I did survive. Uh, I lived to mop again. But I did, I did have a kind of a breakthrough, I guess, in that moment, because it was a bit of a nervous breakdown. I, I just said to myself, laying there, I have to find a better way to manage people. You know, I've got all this resource around me, all this talent, great people around me that many of them I hired. They're awesome. But I have my limitations as a leader. Uh, there's something I'm not communicating. There's something I'm not pressing into. I'm, I'm selling out for it being easier for me to do it my way and do it the right way than do it the way that works for the team. Right. And yeah, it was a turning point um, for sure, because it had me confront where I had some excuses and I was blaming other people. And I'd say it's them, not me. Well, part of this breakthrough in productivity um, probably requires some kind of moment like that where you say enough is enough. I want to go on vacation with my family. I want more time off. I didn't get into business and business ownership to be an employee, right? Uh, so whatever that is for you, and I know over the last 20 years now, fast forwarding from that service aisle fall, um, I've been very interested in learning both about this and also sharing what I've learned through it from, as I said, some of the top teams in the world who are super productive, who are doing big things on the planet. Um, and uh, we can learn from all of that. So here we go. Let's let's look at what's on the next slide here, which is this other world, which is what it is. So what is breakthrough productivity? Well, first and foremost, I say it's your mindset. You know, it's my mindset. And, and in other words, the left of the screen, my left here anyway, it, that's my mindset. It's the conversation I'm having with myself. It's what I'm churning over in my head. It's the excuses I have with not even maybe knowing that they're excuses I have. Again, it's so common out there that so many people are living that life and talking that way that you may not even see that you're talking that way where you are. Um, I know that I wasn't at the time. I thought I was a pretty good manager. I mean, I was a top guy at this top restaurant and lit, you know, living the flagship life and uh, I wrote the schedule. I just happened to do most of the work. Okay. I didn't know all this. I didn't see all this. I didn't know that it was my mindset that maybe was, um, needed to be shifted. So is my mindset one of, as an example, scarcity in time or abundance in time? I know I only have 24 hours in a day, but do I live in a world where there's not enough or there's plenty? And when I shifted and I do live from abundance and where I get scarce, I tell the truth and I say, ah, scarcity mindset, Chad, you're, you're thinking of limitation. No, now I'm abundance mindset. There's plenty more I do in life now. And I'm really good at delegating and all that other good stuff that everyone wants to do because there's an abundance of time. I'm calm. I'm peaceful. I'm more thoughtful. I'm like that. Okay. So your mindset from abundance gives you a quality of life and experience of life where time's not scarce and you're not behind. But if you don't give up whatever your version of, and again, I don't want to lay it on you, but I know human beings, were, we have a lot of similarities. And 
one of the similarities is we like to talk to ourselves. And sometimes how we talk to ourselves is not the most productive context, uh, especially for productivity. So uh, scarcity mindset versus abundance mindset. Plenty of time, still 24 hours in a day, but now I'm going to choose wisely. What's the most productive way I can use my 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 52 weeks in a year, et cetera, to, um, to produce my best results. And I got to get serious about some things. I got to make some choices. I got to have tougher conversations with myself and my people. I got to set higher standards. I got to set higher expectations. See, everything shifts when I'm responsible for my, I'll say my life, because I say my calendar is my life. Productivity lives in the calendar. It does live in blocks of time, it lives in what I choose to do today, what I choose to do tomorrow, what I choose to do the next 90 days, what I choose to do this year. That gives me my life. You want to go on vacation? Is it in your calendar? You want to double your revenue? Is it in your calendar? Do you want to institute a new marketing in the in the practice? Is it in your calendar? Do you want to raise the bar of your staff performance and really build something beyond what's predictable this year? Is it in your calendar to have those kind of conversations? If it's not, it won't happen. Okay, so we're going to get more into that. But I don't want to, I, just like I spent a lot of time on you being busy, could sum up that whole other world. Over here, your mindset in, you could say, Abundant mindset could sum up the whole world or the transformation that's needed for breakthrough productivity. All right, let's keep going. So what else is uh, breakthrough in productivity? Your relationship to time. I was just speaking to that. What is your relationship to time? Not enough or plenty. And I got it or even I got the time I got. Right. And how am I going to choose to use it? That could be a more grounded relationship. So you, you, if the abundance mindset doesn't work for you, like, well, there's still only 24 hours in a day. I always hear that. And that's true. So your relationship could be you got what you got. Now, what are you going to do with it? Right. Versus there's not enough. There is just what there is. So we deal with reality from there. Okay. Your level of owning it all. So breakthrough productivity. I own it all is a declaration you can make for yourself. No excuses. No yeah buts, no it's their fault, no pointing fingers. If I'm overwhelmed, if I'm busy, if I'm out of time, if I have too much, that's all on me. There's something I'm not managing that's creating that experience of life for me. It's not other people, it's not circumstances, it's my reaction to it all, it's my mindset regarding it all. And I'm done with that. I'm gonna now own it all, which means I'm just being responsible for my experience of time, management, productivity, and what I choose to put in my calendar and the results I choose to produce. All right. So also what breakthrough productivity is, is your resilience for staying calm. If we think about, just think about the best leaders you might admire, or you know, when you're at your best, I bet you're very calm. And probably as a professional and a doctor, you're very well trained at mindset and staying calm under pressure, uh, especially at the chair, I would imagine, right? So can you bring that to more areas of leadership and more areas of life? See, I have a value now of being calm. If I get stressed, I stop, baby. I'm not doing it. I'm not playing that game. I'm not going to let my heart go through it. I'm not going to let my wife or my son go through it when I come home stressed. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to wake up stressed. I've got to deal with it. And it doesn't mean I can always figure it out in the moment, but I have a commitment to staying calm in life. And as you can probably tell, I'm pretty intense and talk fast and all that. So I don't mean not being energetic. I do mean that I'm at peace. And I think I have that here next, you know, breakthrough productivity. If you look at the best masters, they're peaceful in what they do. There's a certain beauty and eloquence to the masters in life, whether they're playing piano or probably doing chair side dentistry, there's a peacefulness and a calmness. Now we can bring that way of being to other areas, to managing our team, to managing finance, to managing outside vendors or partners, to our, our families, there, That if that's a value, but it takes you kind of thinking about it and saying, yeah, I am committed to peaceful existence, whatever that is for me. And if I get stressed and anxious, I better darn well just stop and either go to sleep, which is a pretty good idea. I mean, it's tough to do at 1 p.m. maybe, but sometimes you're just having that kind of day. Just go to bed, reset, and you know, um, strive back for it in the morning. However, the more that I notice I practice it, the more I can at least pull my, you know, put down the shovel and stop digging when things are going stressful or anxious. Uh, so next, 
breakthrough productivity also takes you, I, I offer uh, centering on facts. So on the other side of the board there, you're going to see a lot of things like, you can almost call it a story. People make up stuff. We run with our first interpretation of what's happening. We definitely, as soon as I say I'm too busy, there's now a world that ensues for me that I'm dealing with and everything's filtered through this world of too busy, not enough time, too busy, not enough time. Well, again, if I have a commitment to set her on facts, I'll say, what am I really saying? See, a lot of this is your internal conversation with yourself and stopping yourself. So what am I really saying when I'm too busy? So one of the practices here is you can literally take out a piece of paper. And if you think you're too busy, that's fine or overwhelmed. Stop and write down everything that you think you're too busy with. Get it all out of your head because there's a lot of stuff bouncing around in your head. And the degree to which it stays bouncing around in your head up here is the degree to which we will experience overwhelm, anxiety, because we are behind. And there is a way to get everything that's in your head written out. It may seem like it's an infinite list. It's not. Try it out. It's a finite list. You'll get to the point where you start repeating things. You can even put on there, I need to get my hair cut. I need to return a library book. I need to order the supply. I need to pay that bill. You can get everything that there is. Then you can sort that and put it into, okay, this is my business life over here. Here's some personal stuff. Here's health and fitness. And now, yes, you have a to-do list, but it's organized. And what you'll experience, I promise you, is peace of mind because it's what we haven't put into existence meaning written it down or put in our calendar, which I'm going to get to uh, in a few minutes. But if it doesn't live for us outside of our head somewhere that it can actually be dealt with, it bounces around in our head and we can't go to sleep at night. That's what caused sleepless nights and you know anxiety and snapping at the people we love because they don't understand we got a lot of crap going on. And we do. Professional business people, a lot at stake, a lot of pressure. See, I say pressure. Not like pressure, like it's real, but a lot of pressure caused by that kind of world that ensues when it's bouncing around up here. All right, so we st stick on facts. So facts means I can write it all out. Then I start to, I start to chunk it out. I put it into categories. I start to put it into my calendar, which we'll get to, but in actual blocks of time that I can deal with that. I start to be able to make priorities. I start to be able to cross things off lists, say, this isn't really important. You know, I thought this important, but I'm never going to do this thing. It's just being on my to-do list. So stop thinking about doing it. And then you'll have the other 50 items that you can just do in 30 seconds each. And you can knock those off. You get the point here. Deal with what's so. Deal with the facts of what's on your list, not the experience of having a big list. Or maybe not even really having a list, just having it up here. Okay, and then breakthrough productivity is your ability to choose. This is where I work with teams a lot on. So when I'm working with a leadership team or a, a dental practice team, and we're talking about high performance productivity, uh, producing really great results, communication, a lot of it comes down to what are we choosing are the priorities. Here's the whole list. Imagine your dental team. You put up everything on, I say the screen, but put up everything on a list of paper. A screen works well so you can all see it together. Um, but you put it all up there and you say, okay, what are the priorities? Let's deal with this list. What do you think we should be doing first, team? Uh, and you'll look, you say, well, this one really impacts patient care. We got to get on that like this week. Okay, put it in priority bucket over here. Okay, well, here's something that can be done in 90 days. Here's something we've been talking about for three years. You know what? I don't think we have any commitment to actually doing it. Just put it on a different list and maybe we revisit it once a year or maybe cross it off and say, we're never going to do it and let's stop talking about it. So I hope that gives you a sense here that you need to get things up in front of you, either as an individual or as a team, where you then can say, what are we choosing to put in our calendar? Because we do have finite time and we will use it wisely. We have an abundance of opportunity to choose our key priorities that will move this business forward and serve us well and serve our patients well. But let's choose selectively. So we're at work on what matters in the order that it matters most. Okay, and that's gets you into strategic thinking and coming backwards from a big goal and maybe formulating your whole annual plan or your strategic plan or your business plan from the priorities of the business backwards, where the team is helping you choose the priorities. And that creates ownership in the culture. And there's a lot of other good things that happen with this uh, with this world that doesn't happen on the other side. All right. Uh, also, breakthrough productivity is about your uh, ability or capacity for staying focused. So I'm going to you know, we're going to go through 15 quick tips in a moment, actionable pieces that bring this whole uh, blue circle to life. 
Um, but there's some real things you can do that if you're not doing, um, will reduce your capacity for staying focused. Oops. Okay. So that's everything there, everyone. So thank you. As I work through that, I hope that that helps distinguish the two worlds. And now, as I said, we want to give you 15 leadership practices to turbocharge your, turbocharge your productivity. I can see you there. How's this all landing for you? Making sense so far? Okay, good. So let's go through these 15 practices. All right, I divided them into five slides here, three, three practices each. So first one, we're gonna talk about some uh, foundational ones. I'll say, and remember, I'm gonna send this out to you all who are on the webinar, so you have a checklist. But the first one is check your mindset daily, hourly, minute to minute. Okay, so that's just a practice. The biggest thing here I can say is when you lose whatever your best self is, start to become more and more aware of it. So one of the things that I know for myself that I generally generally am is happy, generally happy. And, you know, at least for me, I think I have a sense of humor. I can kind of roll with the punches. I can, things are light. I can get kind of intentional, but even when I'm getting intentional and serious, I'm not significant. I hope that makes sense. It's not like so serious that we should all like, you know, I don't know, be really plugged in and angry or frustrated. So if I get angry or frustrated, or if I said, if I can get stressed or I have the experience of overwhelm, or I have the experience of somebody's not understanding me, or I'm not being heard or something, I stop. I've learned to stop because that's not my best self. I know my best self. I'm present. I'm happy. I'm lighthearted. I'm enjoying what's happening. Even if it's a tough circumstance, it's like, well, that's what we're here for. We're leaders. Let's deal with it. So you'll have your version, I'm sure, where maybe, you know, we all have our red flags for where we take a left turn. That's what we're saying here. That's what I'm saying here. Um, to be most productive, it requires us to be present because we're making decisions, we're choosing things, and we're making sure that we're responsible for not getting into a story in our head about not enough, as an example, not enough time, not enough people doing it the right way. Okay, that all keeps us stuck. And then we go drive home and we bring that home into the house and we bring it, get it on our family. And then if we're not responsible, we don't know we're thinking that way. We wake up into the same world and then we build more evidence for it the next day at the office, at the, uh, you know, in the operating room, wh whatever it is, at the front desk, the next patient phone call, and we never stop the cascade of it. So that's, we start with the mindset. And then be grounded in your vision and goal. See, the more I can catch myself and hear myself in some of that dialogue, the more I can say, okay, don't go there, Chad. Set an alarm. <laughs> it's like a alarm where my mindset is not on. And then when I get present, I stop. Then I can say, now return myself to what is it I'm committed to? What's my goals? What's my vision? What are we up to around the office? And this is where, again, having a an authentic expression of what your team is up to and your practice really works. Uh, but again, even if you don't have that, obviously you're committed to the well-being and great patient care. So that doesn't have to be more complicated. You know, returning yourself there would require somebody being grounded and present both with their team and with the patients, et cetera. So that would probably then reset you to um, your best self. And then lastly, as a foundation is focus on real priorities to get you there. So once you're present to your vision and goals, and especially if you've done some strategic work, but even if you haven't, you can still go, what's the next priority? What's the next action here that I could take as an expression of my vision and my goals? And then it may be a new conversation. You may actually not talk, you may listen more, but you're probably gonna find yourself non-reactive, not triggered and more present and able to deal with what's in front of you. So this is, again, a breakthrough foundational to turbocharging productivity. You see, we said we would bust through some myths. Most people just think you should do more with the time you got. Well, you could do more, but if you're still plugged in and not present, what kind of quality are you bringing? And in my experience, I'm just driving more of the dissatisfaction with that world of overwhelm if I haven't 
than responsible, then I'm in a world of overwhelm, which may or may not be real. I'm going to assert it's never real. It's just what I'm kind of creating. And I'm not dealing effectively, even with a lot of facts or even a very serious circumstance in front of me. I'm not my best self to deal with it when I'm in that other world. Okay. So there's the first three. Next. Uh, number four, be the master of your calendar. So uh, this is where we now get into what I call owning owning your time. So to own my time, I have to know where my time exists. And uh, if you don't use it a calendar, I highly recommend you do. And it may be more difficult in your world of dentistry. I don't know. But I think you probably do live in your calendar and you can kind of like hear me say live in your calendar. You know, uh, the more that you as a business owner have all your priorities and what you're doing designed in your calendar, the more productive you will be. If it's not in my calendar, it's very hard for me to bump up against whatever it's not in my calendar. So in other words, if I know on Wednesday, I've scheduled two hours to do a team meeting off site then, and I've planned that out for a month in advance, and maybe I've even made it a recurring meeting every month for two hours on the last Friday of the month, we get together from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., and we meet and we discuss the priorities of the business. If that's not in your calendar, you're not likely going to have regular team meetings. Okay, that's just one example, which is just true. If you leave it to chance or say, oh, we'll schedule the next one later, or let's just play it by ear, why would you do that? You see, you're leaving something undone that's now bouncing around for you like, oh, I, I need to do a team meeting or I should do a team meeting, but it's not in your calendar. If you put it in your calendar, you wouldn't be thinking about it until you looked at the week before and said, oh, my team meeting next Friday. That's great. What are we going to discuss? Let me work on the agenda. Let me get some feedback. Let me make sure the team remembers. Where are we going to go have lunch? This is going to be fun. You see it's there. Okay. By the way, you can plan everything in your life, quite frankly. You can put haircuts in there or you could put reoccurring whatever you do, gym, you know, uh, you, when you're going to the gym, you could, you, as you start to be the master of your calendar, you're going to say, what's important to me in life. And then plot in there. Here's the family vacation, block it off. Here's, I work out three times a week in the gym. Here's where that's going to happen. Everyone don't bother me. I got to design it around that. Cause that's critical for me, whatever matters to you. It's fun. It's designing your life inside your calendar. Okay. So enough with that, but I tell you without it, you're just winging it and you're showing up. And whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And you're, there's no not being productive because there's no being proactive in the priorities of the business. Um, and then obviously being a master of calendar leads you to choose what do you spend your time on? You know, you have the long list, but now you do have to confront. I'm going to take the weekend off. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to take two weeks off there. And I have all this to get done. Plus I have to see my patients. Plus I got to lead the team. Plus I got to take care of the business over here. I got to pay the bills there. I got to see suppliers there, whatever it is in your world. And you got to fit it all in your calendar. But don't be overwhelmed. The, the, the thing is, choose and fit it in your calendar. And there may be some things that don't fit. And we're going to get to that. But I think on the next slide, I say, you got to learn to say no to some things. Because, and how you know you need to say no, is it literally is now no longer a priority for you. And this is where you get really fun and straight with people. Because you're able to say, no, I used to deal with all that, but I need to either delegate it or just stop doing it because I've got too many other priorities. Not too many. I have the, sorry, I slipped. I have the priorities I chose that I I have full in the calendar, you see? And then if you want to put something else in the calendar, you got to get more productive with the time, shorten some of the other things, get quicker with your communication like that, or yes, work or 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 find more time, which means put it in someplace else that you normally wouldn't want to put it in, but you're choosing. And then you're never the victim to your time because you're doing exactly what you chose to do when you're doing it. And that's the other point about this calendar and choosing your time. Now there's never, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm behind. Once you get everything scheduled, you're just like, I'm doing this. And you can fully focus on what you're doing because it is what you're doing. You don't have to be doing this, but thinking about something else that you're not getting to. All right, next, design your week, month, and year. So I encourage you 
to own the calendar system and then think of it. I love planning. You see, I work a lot in strategic planning with teams because I want them to plan their future. I want them to design their future. I want the team to deal with what are our choices? What are our priorities? There's no victims here. Let's make sure that we're doing our, I don't, I don't always say there's no victims here, but they get the point because we're dealing with accountability. We're dealing with what we're going to own. What are the business priorities? Who's doing what by when? W when should this be done by? The team decides together. Oh, yeah, that's a priority, boss. We got to get that done by next week. Okay. Okay. Who needs support? How are we going to make that happen? Well, if I'm going to do that, I got to stop doing this for a couple of days. Is that okay? Sure, that's okay. See, people get attached to things and then they think it's not malleable. Then you never prioritize what's really important. People get stuck just in routine. And routine's important, but sometimes you got to say, okay, we got to shift gears here because this is absolutely critical for the business success. I hope this is making sense, but I'm out to enroll you in the possibility that you can actually design your year. You can design, the, I've worked with companies, we design a three-year future, a five-year future, and work it all backwards. Now the calendar moves because it's your calendar. So now that's the second point before we move here, don't be the victim to your calendar. You are the author of it, so you can change it where you want to change it. OK, priorities come up, things change. You got to move things around. But at least now you you have a place for it. OK, how are we doing? Good. I know we got a few more minutes here and then we will uh, wrap up, but we're not through all 15 yet. So here we go. Next, learn to say no. I already hit on that. Uh, a lot of us, especially when we're younger leaders, maybe we haven't quite learned yet. Saying no is a very powerful active leadership the you know uh the best leaders in the world say no to 95 percent of the things that people ask them to do think about how many requests the top ceos get in the world as an example okay the top leaders in the world have lots of people demanding and asking a lot of them from above from the side from below um like that right so you got to learn to say no and how you know to say no is that you have integrity with it, meaning you're not trying to be a jerk by saying no. You can literally say, I'm sorry, that's not a request I can fulfill right now because it just I don't have the capacity to do that with what I've already taken on. And then there you go. You don't have something that you've kind of said yes to or you've led on that you might get done. That is the stuff that keeps you up at night. Don't say yes to something unless it fits in your calendar. And just a quick thing here, most of the time somebody asks me to do something, they're not going to get a yes on the spot. Most of the time, if it takes some kind of significant thinking and quality, I'm going to say, let me get back to you tomorrow once I check where I could get that done by and when you should expect it to be complete. Because I want to think through to make sure that it's a quality outcome. And most things that are matter are more than just a quick, this isn't a to-do item. This is something that, you know, I'm talking about things or it requires a chunk of time in your calendar, which is your most precious asset. So learn to say no to the things that don't fit and how you know it doesn't fit to the future you've declared. Okay, next, give up multitasking. Um, I have people in my life who think they can multitask. So let's put it that way. And multitasking, you know, if you just look at it, you can, the scientists will tell you this, the brain's only ever doing one thing with full focus at any one time. Of course, the brain's pretty amazing. I'm aware of my surroundings, even though I'm not aware of being aware of my surroundings because the thing's going to keep me alive and there's a speeding car behind me. It wants me to be able to jump out of the way. So of course, we're aware of things around us, but we know we're also missing most of what's going on around us. And absolutely for those people who think they can do two things at once, like be fully present on this webinar and also be doing email. And you might be doing that right now. I don't know. But if that's the case, tell the truth. You're not fully present here and you're not fully present on your email. You're doing a little bit of half, you know what, on each of the things. So people really can't multitask. We can only do one thing at one time very well. Um, so try it out and don't, don't try to do two things at once. Finish one task, give full focus, then move on to the next task. That's the best way to do it in high performance productivity as a leader. If you're doing a meeting with your team, don't be checking your emails during the meeting with your team and don't have them be on their phones. Take care of the meeting. See, meetings get bad raps because people do jerky things during the meeting that make it average and normal, uh, ordinary. Uh, but if you want high performance, an Olympic team, the coach isn't going to take kindly that the Olympic athletes on their phone during practice. Know what I'm saying? Okay, next. 
Uh, operate in blocks of time. I did point to this earlier. Think about that. Any tasks that you need to get done or reoccurring tasks, say you're doing, you're paying bills or you're invoicing or you're dealing with um, insurance um, billing or something. Well, think to yourself, how long does that take? And say it's two hours a week. Okay, what day you're going to do it on? Are you going to do it in one block of time on Tuesdays between this time and this time and get it done? Or are you going to do it in four different times? I don't know what works best for you, but schedule that in your calendar in a block of time, 11 a.m. till noon every Wednesday I do X. As an example, if it's reoccurring, if somebody asks you for a meeting, you think, how long do I need a meeting for? Is this a 30 minute meeting, a 15 minute meeting, an hour meeting, a two day meeting, lots of different meetings then look and schedule the appropriate amount of time in the calendar for the meeting. A lot of people schedule too much time. A lot of people often schedule not enough time and then they rush and it's incomplete and you don't get the result you wanted. Therefore, you just got another meeting to schedule instead of the result of doing it right the first time. I hope that's all communicating, but confront how much time it's actually gonna take. We underestimate how long things will take to get done. Oh yeah, I'll get that done, okay. And in great high performance teams, they'll actually listen for each other and say, really, Daniel, when are you going to get that done? I know you got a full calendar next week and you just committed to something I think is a, like a four hour project. Are you really going to get that done next week? You know, people say that they're going to get things done to look good or to fit in or to be well thought of, but that's not high performance because we just want to deal with reality and then adjust things. If it really needs to be done by next week, we'll drop something else off the plate. I hope this all makes sense. We're going to keep moving to be productive. Uh, limit all distraction. Okay. So this is practical stuff. That makes sense, especially if you're doing something that really requires concentration. Tell everyone else to buzz off, leave you alone for 20 minutes or an hour because you don't want to be interrupted. Don't knock on the door unless it's an emergency. Um, create your best environment to work. So I know I'm talking to experts often in some of my um, programs and such, I'll use the operating room as an example, you know, of what a great environment would look like. And if you're going to be going to the dentist for surgery or going, you know, for open heart surgery and you looked around and the tools were all dirty and people were dropping stuff on the floor and it was disorganized and they were searching for the right instrument. And that's the last thing you heard as you drifted off, you know, going under, you probably wouldn't feel too comfortable with the environment. So, um, you know, I like to think of everything in life like an operating room. If it's really important, you better have it organized for the outcome you want. That can be your team meeting. It could be your home office, um, your workspace at the practice. Have it be a match for your best thinking, right? And it could be your front lobby. It could be your front reception. Is it really top quality? Is it operating room quality? Is it precision like that to do the precise work of what that area is designed to produce? Is it set up for outstanding customer service and then that only focus wherever you need that? that? That's the kind of thing you can start to ask. And then uh, lastly, celebrate accomplishments. So, um, you know, turbocharging your productivity definitely requires you to slow down and say, hey, good job, Chad, good job team and high five because you're clear about what just got accomplished. Okay, last one. Okay, so this is some master playbook stuff. You know, you'll hear this from all the gurus, but a lot of it works. You know, okay, wake up early. We all know that. If there's something else to get done, I like to go to all the other stuff first. Be more productive first. The waking up early, I'm still working on. I'm not a late sleeper, but, you know, waking up four hours early at 4 a.m. haven't quite got there, but I'm, I'm up for this because I do know the morning hours are amazing and it's a time really where... There's no distraction naturally. And a lot of the scientists will say it's our best time to think, especially the creative tasks or the most important tasks are can be done in the morning. Um, having a short-term memory and get back at it. My son's a, a goalkeeper, pretty good, almost 16-year-old, awesome goalkeeper, actually playing in Spain right now at a high level. And I learned from him as a goalkeeper, he has a very short-term memory. I mean, a goal goes by occasionally, but that kid's a professional. He doesn't dwell on it. He's right back up in position. He's ready for the next shot. And that's how we have to be in high performance and leadership. And, you know, if we have a day or we have an afternoon, remember where we, we, we don't think we got done what we needed to get done. It's fine. Just go to sleep and then wake up with a new commitment again to get back at whatever you've scheduled 
in your calendar to get done. By the way, in your calendar, you schedule your downtime. You schedule if you want to go for a lunch break, if you want to walk and be with nature and that we put in there what's most important. I'm not talking about using your calendar back to back to back to back to create more anxiety. In fact, you should create probably more space in between meetings and occasions of work to be done so you can decompress, relax, and get back and be fresh. Okay, and lastly, uh, of course, we know knocking off the most important item for success first is a great habit to have. Mostly we procrastinate against the, the things that make the biggest difference and knock off all the other stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, the stuff that's not that important, we tend to do first. And then all of a sudden we're surfing the net, the internet or watching Netflix or something for some people. Um, the discipline to do the most, the highest impact item first obviously works. All right, team, I know we're almost at time. So I'm just gonna finish with the last couple of slides. Here's the bonus question. It builds off of what I just said. What's the one thing I can do right now to move forward my most important goal? So if you're ever stuck, you're feeling overwhelmed, just think what's the one thing I'm resisting doing? What's the one thing that if I did right now, whether it took five minutes or an hour, or I got accomplished today, or I even got accomplished this week, or I even got accomplished this month. What's the one thing you can do in your practice this month? What's the one thing you could do before January that would most move your practice forward by the end of the year? It's a great question, okay? And it always has me and it will have you focus and it will have your team focus on exactly what it says. What's most important? Let's knock that off. Okay, and then the action is take the action. Even if it's a tiny action, move toward it. It may be a big goal. What's the, chunk it down into small bits. What's the body of work? What's the one thing I could do? What's the one action in the next minute I could do to be in action doing that? All right, Daniel and Tanya, we're coming to the home stretch. Action steps and takeaways. Oh, here's the productivity guide. So I'm going to give you exactly what it says in screen there. It's a PDF coming your way. If you're watching this webinar after the fact and you want that, you got to get to Tanya at the Orem Group and she will get this to you. So hunt her down. And uh, key takeaways, breakthrough, breakthrough productivity starts with mindset. So that's what I wanna leave you with really. Let's have a mindset shift around what is breakthrough productivity. It's not grinding more out. It's not grinding more from your team, okay? It's, it's thinking abundance and it's thinking leverage and it's choosing and it's a mature relationship to our calendar and time. Next. Practice and habits set the foundation. Absolutely. Um, your minute minute choice makes the difference. Okay, am I going to choose to be in some conversation that gives me experience of overwhelm or am I going to choose to be in abundance and look for the next action that moves me forward to my goals? Your choice. And productivity is yours to triple charge for sure. Um, as we wrap up here, for those of you who haven't been on the webinars, if you like this kind of information, I have a whole video series on leadership that I do. It's 20 high performance videos, which you can download by scanning the QR card there. And I'll make sure that you get those out. And Daniel, I invite you back. And as always, I'm happy to stay on if there's any questions afterwards, but why don't we wrap up the official part here and then uh, we can uh, honor everyone's time. Well, thank you very much, Chad. Another great session. Really like how you were able to define um, some habits that are productive and then actually giving us some actionable uh, practices that we can take and uh, implement in our day to day lives. And um, Daniel, sorry, just, personal... just as we go to I'll, I'll stop sharing so you can put up the QR code. I'd love to hear. Um, I can see people's comments, too. So if you're uh, just before you go, I'd love to hear just what your biggest takeaway is. If you wouldn't mind putting that chat, I always like, cause I talked the whole time and didn't get to hear from you. So if you could, if you could hit with the chat, uh, your, uh, biggest takeaway or your, it could put it in the Q and A if you like, um, that'd be awesome. And Daniel will give you the rest of the marching orders here. All right. So I'm just going to quickly share my screen while we're waiting for those, uh, replies to come in. And I'll put up some QR codes. So this first one here is for your CE credits for today's session. So I'll leave that up for a few seconds. And I'll switch it over. 
And then with this QR code, you can see uh, all the upcoming webinars that we have going on. I'll um, have a few more with the uh, Orem Academy. And then uh, starting off in the new year, we're going to hit it again with the bank. So I hope to see everyone for the upcoming sessions as well. Great, Daniel. And I see a couple comments here. Uh, and the main ones all involve scheduling, which is beautiful. I love that. Schedule the priorities, choose your schedule, choose your calendar, put your life in your calendar, see what happens. All right, everyone. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Tanya.